In this movie, we're going to cover database fields. It's a little bit changing gears here, but it's important to review this subject. Database fields, the basics. For you beginners out there, you don't really need to get too deep into this, but to get started, you just need to be aware of three basic types. There are some more, but those tend to be fairly complex, and chances are you won't really use them that much. The types that I can define for you may go by different names based on the database system you are using. Strings can include numeric characters as well, but cannot be added. This can be anything from ABC1234 to Bob's 40th truck stop. Strings are usually defined by what they can't do. They cannot be added together in a mathematical sense or put into an algebraic formula. The next type you're going to be aware of is numeric. These you can add, subtract, multiply. They will act like numbers, behave like numbers, and work in your formulas. The last are date and or date time. These follow a different set of rules specifically around dates. Now, based on your operating system, whether it's Microsoft, Oracle, IBM, you may have additional fields. Like, for example, strings in some systems are known as varchar, car, text. Numerics can also go by long integer, short integer, decimal. And dates, of course, have date times and a myriad of different type of formats, even calendars that are available to be used. But for your purposes, a string is a string, a number is a number, and a date will be a date. Despite what it's called, you can probably still use these to add, subtract, multiply, and or define, characterize, and calculate date ranges and times between dates. But enough about field types. Let's show you how Crystal allows you to identify these and know what you're working with. If you haven't already, go to Crystal Reports. Let's go ahead and click on New Report, connect to your test database, any way you see fit, and choose the Revenue Transaction table. Click Next. Let's go ahead and display all the fields by clicking the double arrow button. Click Next, and we're not really going to group by. We're just going to look at the fields and see how we can identify them. Go ahead and click Finish. From here, we have a simple basic data dump of everything in the revenue transaction table. Now, you can take your mouse and put it over a field, and a tag pops up telling you the name of the field and, in parentheses, what type it is. From here, we can also go to View, Field Explorer, and click on your database fields. Now, if you don't see what type it is next to your field name, it's easy enough to fix. Go ahead and right click on that field and come down here where it says show field type. Make sure there's a check arrow next to that. If I take it off, for example, I can't see it, but I can easily put it back on. Now in this case, we have all of our types basically defined. We have number, which we can add, strings, and date times. This allows you to identify the fields what you're working with and act accordingly and know how you can use them in formulas and calculations and other data manipulations you may or may not need to make. Remember, your database fields are going to be defined strongly by the database system that you're working with. It is possible to change those, but usually not allowed. Changing data types midstream without proper development and testing can lead to serious problems, and I don't recommend you try it. Our job as report writers and using Crystal Reports is to be able to pull the data and modify it as we see fit. In some systems, everything is stored as a string, and you actually have to translate even the numbers to numbers. And we're going to get into that for you.